This is the best character in the game. Hey guys, it's Jinx, your favorite washed up content creator. So this video got a lot longer than I intended when I started writing the script a week ago. So, you know, timestamps on screen. YouTube video will also be separated out into little chapter segments. I do personally recommend watching from beginning to end because that way you do get the full context for everything because I kind of try to explain things on a step-by-step -step basis. But, you know, you do you. And honestly, the first five minutes of this video is mostly just me giving preface, context, credits, and disclaimers. So if you want to skip ahead, totally get it, but you will miss out on a lot of bad jokes. So, since we last chatted, Kuro has given us a 5-star selector on top of the 5-star selector on the selector banner, so we are guaranteed to get at least two 5-stars that we actually want to play. So, with all of you now getting another standard banner 5-star character, I'm here to explain why you might consider picking up Kalcharo, and just as importantly, why you might not. Assuming you already have Verena. If you don't, get Verena. She is incredibly overtuned and literally the best character in the game right now. I will go into detail as to why there are literally hundreds of videos explaining that. But yeah, if you care about account power, then the 100% must pull standard banner 5-star character is Verena. Although, you know, at the end of the day, this is a single-player gacha game. So just pull whoever helps you have the most fun. In fact, most fun is the reason I made this video. Because to me, Kaocharo is the most fun character to play in all of Withering Waves, and it's not even close. Why do I think this is the case? Well, it's because Kaocharo is the most nuanced character in the game and has the highest skill ceiling in the game, and it's not even close. This is due to the many special animation cancel techniques that he has access to, which is what this video will be primarily deep diving into. That and all of the various pros, cons, and many caveats that come with that. This character is so incredibly nuanced, there's a lot we gotta talk about. On top of that, he, or more specifically his team, will have the highest DPS ceiling in the game when Yinling comes out, and it might be close? Honestly, it really depends on whose calculations you look at, and there is a noticeably big discrepancy between CN and EN calculations, which I am in the process of investigating, but it requires translating CN data sheets, and I did not pay much attention in Chinese school as a kid, so I am the furthest thing from fluent. However, one thing is certain, and that is that he can do big number, and the big number get bigger the more you master him. Also, and this is incredibly subjective, but by the nature of what makes him fun and have a high skill ceiling, doing Kalcharo team things, in my opinion, looks and feels the coolest out of using any team in Wuthering Waves. I mean, let's just rewatch that last bit. I mean, I don't know about you, but the organic tag team combo attacks just look and feel so cool to me. If all of this has you drooling, then let me explain in depth. However, if none of this interests you, or in fact this is scaring you away from wanting Card Charo, well, first off, I've done my job helping you make an informed poll slash build decision. But secondly, I'd still recommend watching the rest of the video. I'm going to be talking in depth about swap cancel mechanics and the pros and cons, and a lot of what I talk about, and he'll be fairly universally applicable to any teams that does swap cancels. Which, basically, every team at least wants to swap cancel their echo animations because they can get real long. In particular, I recommend watching the section at the timestamp on screen as it discusses a very important consideration when swap cancelling that I don't find much of any content creators actually discussing with discussing cancel tech, and it really makes or breaks its usefulness. And even if you aren't interested in loading the most advanced Kalacharo tech possible and just want to unga bunga with him, there is a universally useful dash cancelling tech that I talk about in this video that I think every single Kalacharo player should learn. And finally, just disclaimer real quick, as I have not had the opportunity to make my own calculations, frame counts, spreadsheets, etc. on the game, this is not my full-time gig anymore, and I have just been trying to enjoy the game in my free time. So, when I discuss things such as Kalachara's DPS levels, or the two other units and teams and such, it is done so through the knowledge and information I have learned from various other theory crafters. Mostly through consuming their content, as I have not yet been able to be particularly active in the theory crafting community as of late. Maybe that will change, though. If you're a theory crafter who is interested in discussion or a collab, slide into my DMs. Wink wink. In particular, I would like to shout out Pridwin.gg, the dungeon main's Discord server, and I am Rivenous. However, nothing I say is reflective of them, their channels, their websites, their opinions, or their thoughts. Nothing I say is reflective of them. I am simply a fan of their work who has learned a lot from voraciously consuming all of it, and it is entirely possible I misinterpreted something. Anyway, go check them out and their work and give them some love from me. Links are all in the description. In fact, literally as I am recording this audio, Rivenous just put out a full car charo guide. This timing is genuinely uncanny, and it does make me wish I had been able to work on this video a little bit sooner because I finished the script like over a week ago. But say la vie. However, it fortunately actually covers very different information from the one that this one does and vice versa. 
It's mostly looking at basic mechanics along with builds, weapons, echoes, comps, that kind of thing. While this video is much more of a deep dive on the swap cancel mechanics that can make Karchara's team so strong. In general, he is my first and foremost recommendation for data-driven guides on this game, so definitely recommend checking out his video as well as the rest of his channel, link in the description. And the final, final disclaimer for realsies this time. All of the background footage you're seeing is pretty much just going to be me testing out rotations and tower adversity. If my numbers on my Karchara look low, it's because they are. Cries. I'm still coping with a 3 star level 50 weapon because I'm still waiting on my battle pass weapon for Kachara. Also, most of my echoes are level 20 because I've been building multiple characters for testing purposes. Needless to say, his peak numbers are much, much higher than my footage would otherwise lead you to believe. Please don't bully my suboptimal uncle. Sorry, I know that was a lot of preface, but I do think that context as well as credits are really important to give. And now that we're holy shit 5 minutes, 5 minutes into the video, let's finally talk about Goku's Bizarre Adventure. So, Kalcharo is an Electro on-field main DPS who fights with a stand, and together they shit out damage. And, at least to me, he is by far the most fun character in all of Wuthering Waves. Out of all of the 5-star DPS on the standard banner, he stands at the top of DPS potential alongside Encore, and in fact, when Yilin comes out in two weeks, her loving, motherly embrace will make him have the highest potential DPS, period. Yes, that includes the limited character Jian. Although this of course depends on whose calculations you look at, and we do need to see what changes Yinlin will have from CBD2 to live. So of course, Mountain of Salt will have to reassess in two weeks, but regardless, the two will be an insane power couple. This is something you may have already heard before from other content creators, who may or may have not given the appropriate context. However, the pertinent word here, and the very important caveat, is potential DPS. See, with some other carries like Jian, for example, all he really has to do is press Alt and then mash basic attack and use skill off cooldown. There is some degree of complexity in terms of his team rotations and all to minimize his ER needs and making sure that he has all of the appropriate buffs when he wants them. I recommend checking out I Am Rivens' guide on that if you are looking for more information on that. But mechanically speaking, characters like Jian, Danjin, and even Havoc Rover are all pretty easy to mechanically maximize their DPS. The actual buttons you press are fairly simple, really the question is whether you can dodge and parry well. And at his most basic play, Kalcharo actually is very similar to Jian. He wants to press Alt and then mash attack until the thing in front of him is dead or he swaps off. However, this is him at his most basic possible play, not his highest potential DPS play. Now, you may be wondering, what does his highest potential DPS play look like? Well... Oh, baby. This footage is coming from a Billy Billy video that has been circulating pretty heavily around the community, and it showcases the kind of technical play potential that exists between Kalcharo and Yinlin in CBT2. Link to the video in the description. Now, to most of you, this will likely all look terrifyingly confusing. And don't worry, I will explain exactly what the fuck is actually happening here. However, some of you will be like me and will see this clip and go, I wanna do that. This video is literally the reason why I re-roll for Kalcharo. So, what's happening here is a thing called swap cancelling. Well, actually, there's like five different kinds of advanced tech actually happening in this clip, but the most important one is swap cancelling, and that's what we'll be focusing on. See, Wuthering Waves has a very deep and complex combat system, and this is a very important, if somewhat unknown, mechanic within it. Basically, when your on-field character commits to a longer animation, if you swap to a different character, the previous character will actually stay on screen and still finish off the full animation. This means that if you start up a long animation attack on a character, you can then swap to another character, hit their buttons, and both characters' DPS will literally overlap. And overlapping DPS is more DPS. And in Kajaro's case, it is a lot more DPS. This is a universally applicable mechanic, and even if you don't play Garcharo, it is very nice to use for certain long animations like a lot of Echo Summons in the game. This is pretty universally applicable because basically every Echo Summon we use is swap cancelable to some degree. And because the swap cooldown is one second, that means that any attack that lasts over one second can technically be swap cancelled. Although whether that's worth it or not does get into some caveats we'll get into later in the video. Regardless, this is a universal mechanic, I recommend that you play around with it and experiment because at least to me it adds so much more fun and nuance to the game. However, there is no character in the game that utilizes this tech better than Kalcharo. Although a Havoc Rover and Danjin team does utilize this tech pretty often too, but they still only do it like 20 to 25% as often as the Kalchara team. Also, I still don't have Danjin even after throwing 60 pulls into the limited banner and getting an S3 Mortify and an S2 Chishia, and now I have to save for Yinlin. I'm not salty, you're salty. <clears throat> 
What makes this swap cancel tech work so well for Sephiroth is two things. He has some really long animations that he uses very frequently, in particular his 4th day combo finishes which take exactly 2 seconds. Two, his ultimate form stance switch does not go away if you swap off of him. This is very important to keep in mind because a lot of things in Wuthering Waves such as many outro buffs and cooldowns do go away when you swap, but more on that later. In other words, every time Garchara starts to do one of these forte combo finishers, the little fancy plunge attack things, you can immediately swap to a different unit, spend 2 seconds pressing the unit's other buttons, and then swap back to Garchara, and it will take exactly the same amount of time as if you had never swapped off of him. And when I say as soon as he starts the attack, I mean as soon as he starts the attack. You don't have to wait until he starts plunging, you don't have to wait until he's at the peak of his jump or anything like some of the content creators have said, literally as soon as he starts. That being said, if you pay attention to the background footage, I do it a lot later a lot of the time because I'm 31 and my reflexes are not what they used to be. But practice makes perfect, and that just means that I can push my DPS even higher. And honestly, getting closer and closer to that mechanical peak is part of what makes this character so much fun to me. But yeah, I think it's pretty clear how strong getting 2 seconds of overlapping DPS is. For example, in that amount of time you can swap to Sanhua and use her ult and use her skill and then start her detonation heavy attack and then swap back to Karchara while losing 0 DPS uptime on Karchara. You literally get to do all of that with Sanhua for free. You basically have another player fighting alongside you for those 2 seconds. And honestly, it just looks cool as hell. This is what can push Taser Jotaro to those heavenly DPS levels. In fact, when you do the specific combo I explained above, you're actually also swap cancelling Sanhua's detonation heavy attack. This attack also has a pretty long animation, however, you can swap cancel off of it the moment she starts doing it. This tech is truly maximized when you can swap cancel both characters in the same swap window. This actually makes the 2 second swap window for Uncle Sephiroth a lot more generous than it first appears. Oh, and also, the swap cancel character is completely immune to damage or knockback while they are finishing off the attack. This means that in Wuthering Waves, you can turn long animations from a huge negative, because they can get you hit, into a massive positive, because now you can't get hit during them so they're guaranteed to hit, and you can overlap DPS for the duration of the entire long animation. This is especially huge for Kalcharo because it is very easy for him to get knocked out of his 2 second long animation, and he does it 3 to 4 times every single rotation. Swap cancelling guarantees that the attack will go off, even if the character you swap to gets smacked in the face because you failed a dodge or parry. This principle is universally useful for long animations. Another huge benefit of this tech is that you're also overlapping energy charging attacks, which drastically lowers Kalcharo's energy regen need. Which means you can build even more DPS on his stats to push him even further beyond. Theoretically, a Kalcharo and Yilin combo with perfect play should need little or possibly even no energy recharge on Kalcharo to maintain 100% ult uptime when played well. Although in 1.0, Kalcharo did get a pretty big nerf the amount of energy he regens. Pridwin.gg did a pretty nice blog post covering it, so I recommend checking that out, link in the description. But yeah, we'll have to reassess when Yilan actually comes out because she may also have changes. Alright, so now that we've covered the bare basics of swap cancels and why they are so good, let's look at how we use these in the context of Kalcharo and what his most generic rotation template looks like. So the crux of the swap cancel tech on Kalcharo, as well as the vast majority of his damage, comes from the forte combo finishers. When he is not in ult, the name of this finisher is Mercy, and when he is in ult, the name of this finisher is Death Messenger or DM. For the sake of brevity and clarity, I will be referring to these by these names from now on. For a very quick explanation on how Death Messenger works, basically, when you enter your ultimate stance, the very first attack input is a Death Messenger. After that, every time you hit something with a basic attack, it builds up a forte stack. This only happens once per attack, you do not get multiple stacks for hitting multiple targets with a single attack. At 5 stacks, your next attack will then become a Death Messenger with all of its beautiful 2 second long glory. Important to note, you do not have to hold down basic attack in order to have this heavy attack go off, it just happens when you click the button. Once the DM lands, we do it all over again, but more on that when we discuss the rotation. On the other hand, for Mercy, we need to build 3 forte stacks through using Kalcharo's skill, at which point our next heavy attack input becomes a Mercy finisher. And yes, for this one, you do need to hold down your attack button in order for it to be a heavy attack input. So, at its most bare bones without swap cancels, Kalcharo's rotation is pressing alt and then immediately pressing basic attack to start up his first death messenger. After the DM lands, we basic attack 5 times to build 5 stacks. Quick side note, there are actually multiple ways to land 5 basic attacks, including an advanced tech that will save you a lot of time, but we'll go over that later in the video. After those 5 stacks are built, our next basic attack input starts up DM number 2. After this lands, we then land another 5 basic attacks and finish off with our third and final DM. At this point, we have 7-9 seconds until our ult is off cooldown. Depending on how fast you got through all 3 DMs, 
During this time, we can get through stuff with other teammates, or we can do three skills into a Mercy combo to build up more energy on Kalcharo. I still need to do more testing, but at the 20% ER my Kalcharo has, you need to do this last part every time to build up another roll. So, to review, his most bare bones rotation is Ultimate into DM, into basic attack five times, into DM, into basic attack five times, into DM one last time, into skill three times, and finishing off with the Mercy. Now, keep in mind, this is his combo at the absolute most bare bones. Zero optimizations, zero techs, this is just the bare minimum of what you do on Kalcharo. And through the duration of his entire ult, you can achieve this by pressing ult and mashing attack the entire time if you're not using swap cancels. But the reason why I break it down this way is so now we can transition into understanding where we can put swap cancels in. So, because we can do a swap cancel on every single Death Messenger or Mercy, that means that we have 3, 2, 4 that we can fit into every rotation. So, if we implement swap cancels on all of these, we get 6 to 8 seconds of overlapping DPS every rotation. Which is at a minimum 20 seconds long, but realistically generally ends up close to the 25 to 30 seconds. This means that at the mechanical peak, you can get up to 40% of your rotation as pure overlapping DPS. So, if we were to implement swap cancels, Kalcharo's bare bone swap cancel rotation is Alt into first DM, swap to someone else and do things for two seconds, swap back to Kalcharo, basic attack five times, second DM, swap to someone else and do things for two seconds, swap back to Kalcharo, basic attack five times. Third DM, swap to someone else for two seconds again. Then swap back to Kalcharo, do Kalcharo's skill three times. Mercy. And then swap to someone else for two seconds again. Now, I know that this might sound like a lot, and it kind of is. But at its most fundamental, you're just doing Kalcharo's normal ultimate rotation, and then every time he does a Death Messenger or Mercy, you swap to someone else for two seconds and press buttons before swapping back to Kalcharo. And keep in mind, even if you don't want to swap cancel every single time, even fitting in a single swap cancel can increase the DPS and energy gain of your rotation if you want to try adding some of it into your gameplay. You don't have to start off doing every single swap cancel. You can take your time and slowly add in more and more as you get more comfortable with the mechanics and stop wherever you feel comfortable. Although, for me, it's an incredibly fun mechanic, so I tend to do it at literally every possible opportunity, even in the overworld. It seriously just feels so cool to do it every time. I love killing monsters with the power of friendship. And this is also why, at least for me, Kalcharo is the most fun character in Wooding Waves to play, and it's not even close. I'ma be real, I don't think Kalcharo's that hot. I'm not the biggest fan of his designer personality, I've never really been into the grumpy older man-uncle archetype. And outside of his alt form, I don't actually like his fighting style all that much visually. It's somehow both too weighty and snappy at the same time for my taste. The stand is really cool, though. However, I love complicated and complex rotations and combos that allow me to min-max my DPS outputs. I love mechanically complex characters, and I love even more trying to make those optimal rotations a reality in real-life combat. I live in reset hell. I mean, I am a Switch X main. How the fuck is this video still getting like 3,000 views a month? If you are like me, all of this has your neurons firing, and you are currently cashing in your 5-star selector on Grumpity Gramps here. For the rest of you who aren't masochistic mechanical molders like I am, rest assured that even without any of the swap cancel tech, Gacharo is still a very solid on-field electro DPS. Without the quick swap play, he basically becomes a discount Gian with less AoE and generally less DPS, but that still puts him in the top tiers of DPS up anyway. However, the benefits of swap cancelling are numerous. It adds damage, energy regen, and survivability, all while looking incredibly stylish. I encourage you to at least try working in a swap cancel on Kalcharo's first death messenger. Mechanically, it's the easiest one to time since you just press alt, basic attack, and then immediately swap off. And as you get more comfortable with it, you can start walking them in more and more into more death messengers and mercies until you are quick swapping like a pro every time. So, now that we are familiar with the swap cancel mechanic and why it is so good on Kalcharo, it is very important to discuss the conditions for this to be good as well as the many caveats that come with all of this. Most of the upcoming conditions and caveats are going to be unique to Kalcharo, but that being said, some of these are broadly applicable and universal, especially condition number two, which anyone who uses swap cancels at all needs to keep in mind. With that said, yeekazo! Condition one, if Kalcharo does not death messenger three times per ult, he loses shitloads of damage. Now, death messenger is a huge part of Kalcharo's damage. 
and his ult basically lasts just long enough to barely get three off. If you watch the clip above, I'm doing just very basic swap cancels without even doing anything on the other character, and I've still managed to miss his third death messenger by 0.1 seconds. The window is so tight on this that if you have to dodge or time a parry, it can potentially be enough time to miss the window on getting your third death messenger off, even without swap canceling involved. And you just gotta parry and dodge. This combined with a skill needed to do his swap cancels well in the first place, as well as the skill to be able to dodge and parry properly in the first place, is what makes achieving his theoretical potential DPS so challenging. If you miss the third death messenger, it truly shits on your damage. And also, it shits on your energy regen so your next ult comes up slower. This is the biggest risk we run by doing swap cancels. If you swap back into Garcharo even a second too slow on one of his death messengers, then it might cost you that third juicy DM. At which point, it's very likely that any DPS gain from the swap cancel has been completely negated and then some. However, there are additional techs we can do to mitigate this issue to some degree. The main one is to dodge cancel after his third ultimate basic attack hits, which if you're looking for a visual cue is his upswing attack. See, basic attack 4 and 5 in his ultimate combo string are pretty slow animations. By dodge cancelling as soon as we get to our third stack, we can cut off a good amount of time between death messengers. In fact, this is a hugely important tech used in the Yinlin and Kacharo Billy Billy run. In combo notation, this will be called a BA3 dash cancel. And this is the one tech that I think every single Kaocharo player should learn how to do, even if you don't want to do swap cancels. Because the amount of time it saves gives you the leniency to basically always guarantee you get three death messengers off per ult. I still need to do frame counts on exactly how much this actually saves you time-wise, but anecdotally speaking, it makes the window for three death messengers much more lenient. And in the example on screen, I saved almost two and a half seconds. This was so much time I could actually fit in another ultimate basic attack after my third death messenger hit. And I'm not even being frame perfect here. So you could go even faster. However, the two and a half seconds I'm affording myself here gives me time to dodge, to mess up swap cancels, and to time parries. All while still making sure I can land those three juicy DMs. This does actually give you the amount of leniency you need to be able to dodge when you need to dodge and parry when you need to parry. However, this does slightly less damage and generates slightly less energy for him than doing his full ultimate basic attack 5 combo string. That being said, an extra 2 seconds plus to do extra attacks on Karcharo or teammates will more than make that up. You can also instead cancel this third basic attack by using Karcharo's skill instead. This basically takes as long as doing his dodge cancel instead, so it is going to be more damage and more energy gain while still minimizing the amount of time it takes you to get to your next death messenger. However, his skill goes on cooldown when you swap, even if you have charges left over. So you can only walk more than one of these into his combos if you don't swap cancel. This can lead to rotation issues later on if you still need energy for your next ult because you won't have your skill ready to do a full 3 skills into mercy combo for energy generation. Additionally, we generally use our skill right before popping his ult initially because it helps build a stack of his 5 piece electro set. And with a 10 second cooldown, it's often not even available and off cooldown by the time you actually get to the point where you would use it for animation cancelling. It's a useful tech to keep in mind, but honestly, I just generally don't use it for the aforementioned reasons. It could certainly be useful in certain team rotations, but so far the ones that I have messed around with don't really seem to make much use of it. I've also seen CN players use an additional dodge cancel right before their death messengers, but honestly, I haven't had much time to experiment with that one right now. I'm still exploring all of the possible different kinds of tech there is with Garchara because there is so much, and there is surely going to be a lot more that we discover as time marches forward. The other main tech that helps with fitting in the three death messengers is remembering that you can also swap cancel the other character's attacks. We did already discuss this earlier, specifically when discussing how Sanhua can use her ult, then her skill, then start her heavy attack detonation, and then swap cancel off as soon as that animation starts. However, this is not the only thing Sanhua can do. In fact, Sanhua can do any two attacks that create ice and then also detonate them all in the two second window. So ult skill detonate, intro ult detonate, or intro skill detonate all will fit as long as you swap cancel out the heavy attack detonate as soon as it starts. And this is universally applicable for basically any teammate you want to run with Kalcharo. In fact, just a quick side note, I know I bring up Sanhua a lot, and I don't want you to think I'm doing that because she is like his best teammate or something. However, she is a free character, which means that everyone has access to her, so I like using her as an example. She's also just the best universal sub DPS in the game and works well with basically every carry, so she's a very solid investment choice for literally every account. However, due to his quick swap nature, Kalcharo works well with so many different characters. Mordefi, Yang Yang, Spectro MC, Havoc MC, Jianxin, hell, even Encore or Danjin can work. So long as a character can fit in meaningful DPS within those two second windows that Kalcharo has coming up frequently, they can work as a quick swap team. Will they be his best team? I don't know. The honest reality is that until Yidlin comes out, Kalcharo doesn't really have a true best in slot team. 
However, Jianshin does provide the best outro buff to Kalcharo. However, ever, this is only relevant not on a swap cancel team, but more on that later in Condition 2. Alright, moving on. Now, because losing that third DM is such a huge deal, my recommendation is to develop a habit of immediately swapping back to Kalcharo as soon as you see his death messenger, and regardless of what you were doing before. Admittedly, I greed too much to often and often lose that third death messenger, but learn from my mistakes. Don't become me. You don't want to. My existence is hell. Condition number two. You need to be aware of what buffs drop when you swap. This doesn't only apply to Kalcharo, in fact, it applies universally to any swap cancel you might do. Most outro buffs in the game die when a character swaps off. This means that swap cancelling can drop this buff and hurt your DPS. Potentially by a lot. This is the hidden issue with swap cancelling that I have not seen a lot of content creators actually talking about. For example, if Sanhua were to use her outro, it will buff Kalcharo's basic attacks. And this does include his basic attacks during his ultimate stance. However, once he does his death messenger and swaps off, it will drop the buff. This means his next combo into a Death Messenger will not have that buff. The same applies to Jianxin's outro buff as well, meaning that if you run her with Kacharo, the Swap Cancel tech actually may be hurting your DPS output. Swap Cancelling is a very cool tech, however, it's inherently at odds with the outro mechanic in this game, and those buffs are pretty huge. For example, the deepened buff to heavy attacks from Mordefi for Jian is actually a huge part of what makes Jian so strong. And Jian does actually have animations long enough that you can swap cancel them during his ult. However, dropping Mordefi's buff is absolutely not worth it. Now, a huge part of the reason why Gajaro works so well with Yinan is that, at least in CBT2, her outro buff did not drop with swaps. This is what enabled the insane swap cancel playstyle we see in the Billy Billy video. And Yilin aside, in Kalcharo's case, the potential of being able to have up to 40% of your rotation's DPS overlapping mitigates this a lot. So it's probably still better to swap cancel anyway due to how strong overlapping DPS and energy regen is. The main exception to this is probably Jianxin. Her outro is a deepened damage buff to ultimate damage, and all of the death messengers Kalcharo puts out are ultimate damage. So in the case of this team, doing swap cancels will likely actually be a DPS drop. Which does make her a fairly ideal teammate for Kalcharo if you are looking to not to do swap cancels and instead just do the keep Kalcharo on field and mash basic attack playstyle. However, this team is deceptively difficult to run, at least rotation-wise. Because A, you have to make sure that Jianxin is getting her outro buff up fast, which is really hard to do without eating into a bunch of Kalcharo's field time because she builds her outro buff really slowly. Like, if she just stays on field to build up her outro, it takes almost 15 seconds. There are some quick swap rotations that they do in CN that can build it up over the course of multiple rotations, but you're not getting on every ult at that point. And these still take up a decent amount of time. Like, keep in mind that if you're not doing quick swap tech with Kalcharo, then if you want him to ult every 20 seconds, between his 11 second ult and then his 3 skills into Mercy combo, you get like maybe 3 to 5 seconds with your other characters. At which point you're just delaying his next ultimate rotation, and then that kind of begs the question of, is the buffs you're getting out of wasting that time actually worth it? And then, you have to make sure that the outro buff is lining up with Kalcharo's active ult window. Now, I do want to say, please take everything I'm saying with a giant mountain of salt, because I don't own Jianxin, so I can't test her with Kalcharo. However, from a theorycrafting perspective, just looking at the issues Jianxin has as a character, primarily her field time issues, I'm definitely not saying that they won't be good in a team together, I'm just trying to highlight issues that come up with it, and it might not be nearly as catch-all great as people seem to think it is. You have to somehow make sure that you're building up her outro very quickly, because she does a lot less damage than he does, and then you also have to line that outro buff up with his ultimate being active, and then you also have to be very aware of condition number three. Don't let Kalcharo's enhanced intro skill troll you. So a neat thing that Kalcharo has is that when you ult, his next intro attack is an enhanced one with a very cool cinematic attached that does a shitload of damage. Note that the in-game text says that this triggers when your ult ends, but this is a localization issue. Swapping off during his ult even before it's over will still trigger this special intro attack. This is a very nice damage increase for him and looks cool as hell. However, if this happens during his ult, it eats up a bunch of your ultimate timer. Specifically about 2.6 seconds. It is still just barely possible to get 3 death messengers off when that happens if you've cut enough time with dash cancels, but it makes it so much tighter. In fact, it's so much tighter that 90% of the time, you are going to lose your third death messenger if you do his enhanced intro during his ultimate. The easy solution to this is to make sure that anyone you swap into will not have that intro skill ready. Ideally, you should be popping your support and sub DPS intro skills before swapping the Kalcharo anyway. Or if they aren't built up before you swap to Kalcharo, you're currently building them up while swapping off of Kalcharo, so that they will be ready for Kalcharo's next ultimate rotation. However, this can be easier said than done, and is a thing you want to keep in mind. Condition 4. Do not let perfect dodge counters troll you. Perfect dodge counters are awesome. 
They look cool, shred a bunch of vibration meter, and do a lot of damage. However, Kalcharos is way slower than his ult's basic attack combo string and can seriously hurt your stack gain. Furthermore, because his ult converts dodge counters into resonance liberation damage, it doesn't even build a stack until you do this weird follow-up attack that is even longer. But you can solve this pretty easily by dash cancelling the dodge counter as soon as it hits, and this will start up his next basic string immediately. Or, you know, just fail every perfect dodge, so it's just a regular dodge instead that doesn't trigger a dodge counter to begin with, which was totally planned, I did it to be optimal. Condition 5. Also, don't get hit. Getting hit hard enough to be staggered also wastes your ult timer. Now, assuming you do get hit, it should still be more than possible to fit in three death messengers with good dash cancelling tech to save time. But yeah, don't get hit. This is actually a general problem for Kalcharo with or without swap cancelling. As I mentioned, he barely has enough time to get three death messengers off during his ultimate even if you don't swap cancel, so getting hit even once will probably cost you that third death messenger. And this is why, once again, I recommend that every single Kalchao player should learn how to do a BA3 dash cancel. Simply put, things are going to try to hit you within the 11 second duration of his ultimate, and if you don't do any dash cancels in his basic string, you probably won't have enough time to fit in your death messengers. Alright, and finally, we have condition 6. Somehow do all of this in live combat against real enemies that are trying to murder you before you murder them because we live in the cruel doggy dog world woof woof. Yeah, so doing this is not that easy on paper, and it's harder to do in real combat. However, it is so satisfying to pull off when you do get it down. Again, you don't have to do this tech if you don't want to. Kalcharo still functions very well as an on-field electro DPS without swap cancel tech, and in fact, if you decide to run him in a team with Jian Xin, you're probably better off not swap cancelling. Although, I would still recommend that any Kalcharo enjoyers learn to use his basic attack 3 dash cancel tech since it gives you room to breathe during his ult uptime. Yes, I know I literally just said that, but it's worth repeating. However, every swap cancel you can fit in will increase your DPS by overlapping your teammates' DPS. It will generate more energy for Kalcharo and your other teammates, which will lower the AR needed on them, meaning you can build more DPS, and it will look cool as hell and feel even cooler. And at the end of the day, that sounds like a lot of fun to me. So there are like a lot of other animation cancel text for Kalachara that I was originally going to cover in this video, but it's already insanely long. And I was supposed to finish this video like a week ago, but life got in the way and shit happens. And now I spent all my free time for like the past like three whole days just trying to finish this video because I'm out of practice and rusty and it's taken me a lot longer than I thought. There's also so many other nuances to Kalcharo I haven't covered. For example, his quote unquote bread and butter combo of doing attack skill, attack skill, attack, I feel is completely a trap and not worth using 90% of the time, if not more. But that is like well beyond the scope of this video and I don't want it to be 40 minutes long. Also, it was just discovered that apparently we have some fighting game tech that exists in the game. Shout out to EO, link to his video in the description. But this means that there is even more tech we have yet to discover that could be huge, especially for Kacharo. So instead, I might make a follow-up video covering those. Let me know what you think of that idea in the comments, I guess. I also had a section here, breaking down and covering full example rotations, but uh, this video is already 30 minutes long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it here, and then maybe work on some follow-up videos covering all the other stuff. This character is way too nuanced. I already have like at least an hour's worth of extra content I could make on this guy already. For those of you looking for build information on how to build Kalcharo, I just recommend either checking out Ravinus' video about it or Pridwin.gg. They both give very good data-driven explanations and recommendations, and I definitely recommend just checking out their content. Links in the description for just all of the things mentioned in the video. And like, leave a like, comment, or all of that various YouTube algorithm stuff, I guess. I don't know, I don't do this full-time anymore, do what you want. But yeah, this has been Jinx, your favorite washed-up content creator, signing out. Bye!